Hey guys, I'm Jill Powell and I'm joined today by Betty who is a fellow makeup artist, hairstylist, tanning artist, all of the above. She has actually seen me naked and tanned me before, but I'm so glad that I actually get to be working on your face. So we're gonna show you this awesome complexion today with some concealing of hyperpigmentation, some contouring, some highlighting, a little bit of everything to create this beautiful face. Okay, so Betty came in already prepped for me, which was awesome. So as she's a makeup artist, she knows what she's doing. I trust her. So you got moisturizer, eye cream. Uh, yeah, moisturizer, eye cream, serum underneath. Perfect. So I can tell your skin's nice and hydrated, which is awesome. So I'm just going to go in and start with primer. So today I'm going to be using the Veil Primer from Hourglass. What I love about this one, it's a mineral primer. It's um, got a little bit of SPF. So it will bounce light if you do not cover it up, but since it's a primer, you, don't, you will be covering it up with the foundation, so that is not a big deal. Um, but what I love about it is it, I feel like it waterproofs makeup. It really makes your makeup stay. So if I'm doing a bride or a singer on stage, you know, if they sweat or anything like that, it just really makes everything stick and stay so well. And I love it. So this is, um, the BH Cosmetics brush, it's just a fluffy synthetic brush, so I'm going to be using it for the foundation as well. So I can apply my primer with the same brush and just be really conservative with my brushes. It helps me in my downtime since I have to wash all these brushes every single day. So it's good to reuse brushes. And you pretty much just all along the face, anywhere where you're going to put foundation, you want to put primer. This one also will help to smooth out pores just a little bit. It's not like a heavy silicone or dimethicone primer, but it will definitely smooth. And then it just, like I said, it adheres the makeup so well. Make sure you turn your chin a little bit this way. Make sure I got oop, all that over there. Cool. And you said you use a primer every day. What primer do you like? Ooh. Yes. <laughs> There's so many good no. ones. Uh, what have I been using lately? I'm using one of the MAC ones. I can't think of the name though. It's got like a, it's like a moisturizer more like, but it's got like a pretty gl glitter to it too. So. Nice. So we're gonna be doing a few foundations. I always like to mix my foundation. So first I'm gonna start out with MAC Pro Long Wear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. So I love this one because it has kind of like a skin-like glow, but it's long wearing. It's waterproof, it's great. I started using this for some of my clients that do concerts and sing, um, just because it was something that would last on stage, but it still looked like skin. So great foundation to try. It's beautiful, it's not like super matte or drying. So I love this and right now, you said your skin's a little bit drier, so this is gonna be really great for you. All right, so I'm gonna be using a couple of different colored foundations. So I have NC30 and NW20. You can tell that the NC has more of a yellow tone to it and the NW is more neutral, a little bit um, more of a pink undertone. So I'm gonna do kind of a combination of the two. Um, anytime you have a longer wearing foundation, a lot of times it will oxidize. So if you see that color and this color, this color is a little bit lighter, that has already oxidized, which means it's blended with the oxygen in the air and sometimes it will get a little bit darker. So I always like to um, let it sit on my hand so you can kind of see what color it's gonna be. I'm starting with the NC30 along her forehead and I'm just kind of like pressing and blending at the same time. It's actually a really pretty color on you might be your perfect match. So I may or may not need this NW20, but I might go in with a different foundation. Yeah, I like it. All right, so continuing with my NC30 along her chin, we're just gonna go in above her 
mouth. So I'm kind of focusing on the center and I'm kind of, you notice I'm not like airbrushing. This one has, um, this brush is just allowing me to kind of like place it almost like a beauty blender. So it's just really smooth, smooth transition, um, smooth texture. It's really, really nice. And I'm kind of going along the perimeter now and I just want to Again, smooth everything. Now I'm going to use more of like an airbrushed um, motion, so just kind of blending it out. She doesn't need a ton of coverage along the outside of her face, so I don't need to kind of pack it on, but we're just going to buff it into the skin. And then turn your chin this way. So apply. Again, you guys know I love my sheer layers, so just making sure that we blend everything out and just sheer layer. And if we need more later, we can always come back in with more. It's just giving her a nice, smooth complexion. And just buffing it before it sets. And anywhere I need coverage, you can kind of tap it on. So Betty is a makeup artist as well, and you love makeup. I do. You can handle a good amount of makeup. So I am not being super shy. Um, I still like my skin to look really pretty, but you're used to wearing makeup, so I'm not going to do like just like a sheer tinted moisturizer because you'll feel very bare. <laughs> I know. I always feel bare when... Where is it? <laughs> I know, when people don't put enough on. But... As you can see, I'm, I'm going to start building coverage where I need it, just kind of checking everything out. But because she's used to wearing makeup every day, I'm not going to be super light-handed. A little bit of coverage there. Do you like to cover your freckles completely? You have cute little um, freckles, or do you like to show them a I little bit? I show them a little bit. Okay. Always ask. Some people love their freckles. Some people don't love their freckles. Some people want them gone. Yeah. That was like me them. for like my whole life. I like them. There's certain ones I like. I don't like my forehead freckles. And I... I like my... Yeah. My I don't freckles. mind... I don't mind these ones, but I don't like my forehead ones. And there's like... I don't like the ones on my upper lip. No. But there's just like certain places I'm like, I like that to be clean. But because I like play with my hair so much, I always wipe the makeup off on my you forehead. So those ones always show. I like some big ones. I don't know. It's weird, but I love freckles right here. So seems to be the new thing too. I know people are drawing freckles on. People are getting them tattooed. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. And they just come in and do little dots. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, to each their own. If people are trying to look like me because getting tattoos with freckles, I'll take it. I have lots and lots of freckles. Stand in the sun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and then turn this way. I'm just gonna make sure. I didn't use any of that NW20, so you have one color all over, which is typically what I don't do. I typically like to create a lot of dimension. So we're gonna go back in with other products to create that dimension, because I don't want you being so flat, but I just I just kept going. I really liked okay. how this foundation looked, so. So I'm gonna go in with my favorite contour palette. I know, it's the NYX palette. I just love it because there's so many tones and there's so many colors and they're just, so much you can create with it. So I'm gonna start with this second guy and I'm using a angled brush. And Betty's got like a good, I can see where her cheekbone is, I can see the dimension. And basically she's a perfect candidate, center of the ear to the corner of the mouth. That's pretty much where her contour is. So I'm gonna go in and just lay my contour down. And I'm doing sweeping motions and I'm gonna kind of sweep up a little bit because I do wanna lift her cheeks. And I'm just gonna really get that contour in there. And you like contour, right? Chiselet. <laughs> get that face, snatch it. So some people can handle a lot of makeup and some people like it more natural. So we are gonna be doing all my tips and tricks for that, that beat face today. And you're taking photos, so. I am. It'll be perfect timing. Christmas cards with my dog. There you go. I gotta get my Christmas cards out. You know, I usually get it after Christmas, but I'm trying to be proactive. 
That's good. Hey, you're still on time. I know, right? It's only a couple weeks. And then just turn this way. So I'm starting out with my first color, and I'm actually going to do a couple colors for her contour, and I'm going to show you why. I'm just chiseling out this cheek. And then blending as I go. So this is my first one, and it's going to be a little bit wider, a little bit more blended, and then I'm going to go back in and really chisel with a deeper color just along the bottom to make it stand out. So again, we're just applying a little bit along her hairline, this will, and then blending into her forehead. This will just kind of create that, that dimension and that warmth throughout her face. And do a little bit along. Do you contour your jawline? Sure do. <laughs> Cut them out. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a little bit along her jawline. And this is creating shadow. So I don't, I personally don't do like a really strict line. I create that shadow. So when you're contouring your jawline, you want it to appear that it's just shadows, lightness and darkness. So if you have light coming, where would it shadow? So I'm creating that shadow with bronzer or contour. A lot of people will do a line that looks amazing in photos, but again, walking around every day, you'll notice it. And sometimes you're like, what is that? So yeah. I personally like to create that illusion. You're like, oh, is that just the light or is that the shadow? Missed a spot. Yeah, you don't want to look like your foundation doesn't match or anything like that. So if you notice, I'm basically going right along her jawline where the shadow would be, and I'm blending it down so that this whole entire area is getting shaded. And I'm using like a neutral color so it's not super orange. It's not super like taupe. It's just kind of right in the middle. And I'm just shading, shading, shading. Now, if, again, if you're doing a photo shoot and you want to contour your jawline and you're only at the photo shoot, definitely like with the lighting, see where that shadow would be and you can go in there and chisel it out, no problem. But on an everyday basis, I like to make it look more natural, so. So now I'm gonna go in with the deeper color in the palette and I'm just going to, I'm using a smaller angled brush. So this one's a little bit um, skinnier. This one's by Guerlain, 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 Guerlain. I can't speak French at all, so I apologize. Um, but this one's a little bit skinnier, so I can chisel a little bit better. So I'm gonna turn your chin actually that way just to show a little bit in this, there we go, yep. So I'm gonna go right very lightly along the bottom of her contour that I created just at the beginning. And that's just gonna chisel out even more. I'm do the same thing to the other side. So right along the bottom, very lightly, and it's just that deeper color. I'm gonna tap this one in with my finger. It's a little strong. There we go. Blending that out too. Cool. And then I might take just a little bit right there and then turn this way, and then just a little bit right there. Perfect. So she is contour. Do you contour your nose? I usually do, just because I feel like it's super white down the center of my face if I don't. I was seeing, yeah, I'm like, I've got the color going here, and that's what and I was asking. if I don't have it here, I'm like, oh, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take the same palette. I'm going to use a smaller shader brush. This one is Morphe M524. And so it's just basically like, it's like a huge eyeshadow brush essentially, but because it's really dense, um, I don't wanna to apply too much product, so I'm just going to get some on my brush and then dust it off, because I like to work and build up to my um, intensity. So I'm just gonna come along the side. And I'm just gonna brush down to blend that. I don't like my nose contour to be super intense. The reindeer line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't love that. That's a good way to put it. I've never heard that. The reindeer, the reindeer line. line. Yeah. Can you know how reindeer have like the stripe mm -hmm. in the center of the nose? You don't want that because you can see it when you like walk around looking yeah. like that. It's not pretty. It. I know. <laughs> right? So we're just going to come right here. And my, my touch is very light. Like I'm very, very, very light touch because I'm building it. Like I can always go back in and do more, 
but I don't want to, and I'm gonna do a little bit right here from her brow. I don't always do this, but you have like a really strong brow, strong forehead, so you can handle a little bit of contour right here. Do you normally contour right there? Mm -hmm. See? See, no. And I've only met you a couple times. I mean, funny story. <laughs> Should we tell them? <laughs> okay, so I needed an airbrush tan because mm -hmm. I was going to a wedding and I wanted to look good. Um, and so you airbrushed tan. So yeah. I posted on our local Facebook page asking for someone to tan me. And then you commented and then I, we had a mutual friend. So I messaged my friend. I was like, hey, is this girl legit? And she was like, yeah. So the first time I met you, I literally like stripped down naked in first my- Five minutes. Foyer of my house and she spray tanned me and my kids were like, mom, you're naked. What are you doing? <laughs> it was pretty hilarious. So you've seen every inch of me, <laughs> literally. Yep. Top but, to bottom. But look at this. Now I get to do your yeah, makeup. So it's, it. it's so fun. And you're a makeup artist as well. Mm -hmm. So makeup, hair, tanning, it all works a little bit of everything. Way. Yeah. So this is fun. So I'm going to, you know, see what you do for your makeup as well, because I want to make sure that you are comfortable with what I'm doing and all of that. So perfect. Thank you. I know these lights are hot. All right, so she has complexion, she has contouring. We have not done any concealer, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of concealer and we'll probably do a little bit of brow. You have really good brows. Thank you. Are those all yours? Yeah. I get asked if they're microbladed. I I'm literally like, no. was like, they're microbladed. I'm like, they're not microbladed. I go microbladed. to one lady and she is like, don't go anywhere else. Oh my gosh, yeah. she has really good brows. I, I seriously was like, they're microbladed. And mm -hmm. I was like looking, I'm like, wait, that's hair. I get asked all the time. <gasps> they're so perfect. She takes care of me. I'm jealous. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do a little bit of concealer. And I grabbed two colors from Becca. These are the Ultimate Coverage Concealers. Um, one of them, the name fell off, so sorry guys. It's probably... The shade darker than banana, if I had to guess. And then I also have, oh my gosh, these are so small. I can never read these. Cream. Okay. Do you have a hard time reading? Oh, yeah. Like. I'm like, oh, it's a number. Oh, no. It's, mm -mm. no. it's so crazy. So thank you, Becca, for making me feel old. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to mix these two colors. So cream's a little bit lighter. Just going to brighten. And I'm going to go right under her eyes. This is a flat foundation. No, it's not. This is a flat concealer brush. So something that's synthetic and flat will just really kind of pack on the pigment. So I can just really get that coverage and nice and bright under her eyes. So I'm going to create this kind of triangle all the way from her inner corner. I'm going to go down a little bit and then bringing it back up. Take my beauty blender and we're just kind of bouncing it to press it into the skin. I like my concealer and sheer layers as well, so you can always do one layer now and then one after you're done with your eyeshadow to make sure it's nice and clean. Pretty. A little bit in here. I'm also just gonna take my finger. There's a little excess right by her lash line, so I don't want it to crease. So I'm just pressing it to remove any excess and just press it into the skin. No wrinkles. <laughs> You've got beautiful skin until you take care of it. I refuse to get old. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> I think I stopped aging at like, well, so I think in my head. Right. Like 28. So. Oh, yeah. I tell people I'm 28 all the time. Right? I'm 28. You guys believe me? Shh. I'll take anything under 30. <laughs> Well, 20s and new 30s, so. Exactly. That means I'm actually younger than 28. <laughs> I am not 38 yet. So again, just bouncing it with the beauty blender and then bouncing my finger just very gently to blend out any excess and remove any excess. And a little more coverage right here. No, but it's good. So, I mean, do you mind if I call it out? No, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's there. 
hey, we're just gonna call it out. I like to be really real. Yeah. So she has a little bit of pigmentation on her upper lip, which can happen if you take medications and your skin's photosensitive and you go out in the sun. It could even happen like while you're driving. It can be the, the smallest exposure to sun. You can get pigmentation, hyperpigmentation. So it's very hard to get rid of. Yeah. Um, it's been like, fading with skincare. But... Right, so like you can use hydroquinone, you can use vitamin C's. You can use a lot of brightening agents, uh, but it is difficult and it takes a long time. So anytime you have pigmentation, if I'm using, like her skin color was more golden, so I used more of a golden foundation. What happens is if when you have pigmentation and you put yellow on top of it, it almost turns gray because yellow and like blue technically, because it almost has like a bluish undertone, make green. And so like you get this greenish gray blue color. So you need to counteract it you need to like lift that and warm it up so you have to use something more peachy yeah so what do you normally use to uh one of the mac pot concealers oh yeah yeah the peachier one okay so i'm gonna take a little bit of this concealer because i know that it's really peachy and it will hopefully work this one is um bisque number 260 so it's is it is more neutral i just want to make sure it's not going to be too dark but i can always lighten it up so we're just going to go right over where it's turning gray. Look at that. And that just brightens it right up. It's not too dark, shockingly. I just put that right on top. And that orange color in there will counteract that darkness. You don't want, you don't want too much coverage on the upper lip area because it can look heavy and cakey but you also want to correct. Look at that. Mm. Yay. That's what we wanted. Cool. All right, so we have foundation, concealer. I didn't do anything along your lids. Let me add a tiny bit. Go ahead and close. I'm just gonna add a little bit of foundation just to neutralize her eyelid color. So this is just residual foundation that's on my brush from when I did her face. But I always like to neutralize and make everything go together. Do you do a lot of powder? Or not a lot of powder, do you do powder at all? Um, if I do anything, it's usually like under eyes to keep from creasing. Um, other than that, I try not to do too crazy powder because I get too dry. See you guys, another makeup artist that doesn't <laughs> use a ton of powder. You don't always have to pack on all this powder, right? You yeah. see so many people and they're like, and hey, if, you, if baking is your thing, bake me a cake as fast as you can. I don't care. Right. But I personally don't love a lot of powder because I don't like to look super dry. I put some on today because I was doing my makeup really fast. Um, so when you need that extra coverage or yeah. if you're doing your makeup really fast, that powder foundation can be really nice or that translucent powder if you get really oily. But I personally like skin to look like, like skin. skin. So... I love that she doesn't use a lot of powder. Yay! I'm gonna do a little bit of highlight. We all love our highlights, right? Do you love a highlight? I do. Okay, good. What are your favorite highlighters? Ooh. Do you have any that you like? Love? I may or may not have them in my kit because uh, I have a ton, but I only I carry like, some. I love all the NARS ones. Mm. I love a good NARS one. Ooh, there's one. All right. So you love highlighter, I, I love highlighter. This Orgasm highlighter, and I don't know if it, honestly, sorry Nars, I don't know if they sell it separately, but it does come in this awesome palette um, that you know was out during the holiday season. So it has your Laguna, your Orgasm, and your Orgasm highlighter. I have a feeling that this might be a permanent product. I hope so. Um, it's beautiful. So we're gonna do a little bit of this, and then you said you didn't try it, you haven't tried right. the Amrezy. Anastasia and it's back out for everybody to purchase so I might have to use a little bit of that because this is literally like liquid gold I put it on my shine hand, it's, it's so pretty so for highlighter today I'm gonna use my Morphe M501 brush I love this guy because it's basically like a big blending brush and we are going to go on the very tops of her cheeks she has such a good face shape for highlighter here so I can load it on. Oh, so pretty. And I like to do this before I set any concealer because if I can use this to set that concealer, then, then I'm using less powder. So we're gonna go again right on the tops of her cheeks. 
right in here. And then she can handle a little bit over here as well. We'll do a tiny bit through the center of your nose just to make that stand out. Tiny bit. You know what? This is where we're going to do this one. I love it. All right. Okay, but like you've seen this. Like, oh, yeah. It's, it's kind of insane. It looks like it's wet. It's yeah. so pretty. It does look like it's wet. So we're going to do a little bit on her cupid's bow. I'm going to add a little bit more just in the center. Oh, so pretty. I mean, let's just load it. We're just going to add more highlighter. I'm not going to stop you. <laughs> You're going to be a glow worm. So she has highlighted all up. You could do the inner corners. You could do under the brow. You can, I mean, there's so many places you can highlight collarbones, like center of the neck, whatever you want. When you're taking photos and you're showing your shoulders, I also like it on the tops of my shoulders, like right here. It just really gives this beautiful glow to the skin. So highlighters are fun. We love them. Do you do brow pencil, brow powder? I usually do like pencil and gel. Okay. Like, just like and fill in where I need to and then a gel over. Okay. Do you like a strong brow or a little either. bit more natural nowadays? I'm kind of in between. Got it. Yeah. So we're gonna do a brow pencil because I like to stick with what my clients are generally used to. I mean, you could you have a good brow, so you could do a powder, but it just depends on what you're comfortable with. So I've got some really awesome pencils that we can try. This is the Armani pencil. Got a cute little comb that I can comb your little, you literally have perfect brows. I'm jealous. <laughs> okay, I need your brow lady, but I also need to grow brows like this first <laughs> because mine do not grow like that, so. I'm going to start, and because she has such great brows, I don't want them looking too fake. So I'm going to use this fine eyebrow pencil by Armani. So basically, I can draw hair and just kind of fill in a little bit for her, just to perfect. And then take my little cute little comb on the end and brush those hairs up. I concentrate a lot when I'm doing brows, but just kind of filling in along the top. I do like my tails to be really perfected because I find that when that's really perfected, it look, just looks really clean in photos. And then we'll go under here. I'm just gonna draw a little bit on the base and kind of flick up. That way, I like the beginning of my brows. Right now I'm into the like more natural beginnings. So if you keep that bottom really strict and strong and then just keep the rest of this really natural looking, it just looks really pretty. Good, we are on the same page. <laughs> I know it's always hard doing, like you know how to do makeup. So doing somebody's makeup that knows how to do makeup, sometimes like, oh, hopefully I do it good enough for you. I'm super picky when I, I have other too. people do my makeup. So it's hard. Yep. So look at that. So even though she has a really awesome brow, just the difference in the two sides, you can see it just looks really clean and polished in photos. So that's why we do brows, guys. So same thing on the other side. I'm gonna have you turn your chin the other way So we're just going to feather in her brow. Just light strokes. Again, getting that underneath really Strong and feather up, keeping it natural. And while I'm doing one brow, I'm constantly checking my work on the other side to make sure that I'm mimicking and making them look related. I don't want to go too strong on one side and not as strong on the other, so. It's always good to check both sides.
So we have done pretty much most of your complexion. I might touch up a few things at the very end once we do eyes, but for the most part, I'm, I'm happy with it. I mean, she's got this beautiful complexion. Everything's evened out. She's contoured. Um, oh, I didn't do blush. I was like, I know we're missing something. Don't forget your blush, ladies. <laughs> it's important to have those beautiful rosy cheeks. What is your like go-to kind of blush style? So the reason why I'm asking, her skin tone can handle pink, peach, plum, everything. Like you really can. Like she's got this beautiful medium golden skin tone and honestly any of those colors will look good. Um, my go-to is usually Coco from MAC. Is it, okay. Is that what it's called? Coco? Possibly. Something yeah. Coco. It's like a really pretty, like, mauve I was going to say mauve I mauve think I know which one you're talking about. I don't have that one, but I have something kind of similar. Okay. Like a mauve like neutral, a mauve like... Yeah. Okay. I can't believe we almost forgot blush. It's like my Desert Island product. I didn't think about it. I know. And I was, like, looking and I'm like, I mean, Something it looks really good. clean and pretty, but there was no color. So... We are going to add some blush, and this one is Blush Baby by MAC. So you like more of that kind of mauve neutral, yeah. um, and you said you like a good amount of blush, which is yeah. good, because I do too. Um, so I'm going to go right on her cheekbones and then blend it into her apples. Oh, yeah. There it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. You usually use Sweetest Cocoa from MAC. Sweetest Cocoa, yeah. Yep. Which, I don't have in my kit, but maybe I need to add it to I my love kit. That one. Yeah, I know exactly which color you're talking about. And I'm using um, just an angled blush brush. This one's by Morphe, I think. It is. Oh no, this one's the MAC 163. If they still make it, I'm not sure. They've changed a lot of their brushes recently, and honestly, my MAC brushes are so old because they last so long. So this is my old MAC brush, but None I do love, I know, look at that. I was like, I'm on none of mine have. There anything. it is. A 168, MAC 168. And that's again, if they still make it, because they've changed a lot. Look at that, there we go. There we go. So I'm blending this kind of like within the contour and highlighters, so like right in between the two. So you're getting blush, melted into the contour, melted into the highlighter, and you really don't know where any of them start and stop. So it just creates this beautiful cheek, beautiful dimension with some color. Yay, that's what we were missing. There we go. Now I'm happy. Okay guys, so just to recap, we've done complexion. So we started out with a primer. We did Hourglass Veil Primer just to smooth everything out, make sure it stays on really well. Then I went in with the MAC Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation, NC30, and I did that all over. We ended up not doing the two colors like I normally do. So in order to bring back that dimension, I wanted to add um, that contour and that bronzer. So we used the NYX palette and contoured with two different colors. So I started out with the kind of more neutral one and then I went in with the deeper tone just to really chisel out her cheek. Um, we did do a little bit of contouring along her jawline, along her nose and her forehead. And then I went ahead and did a little bit of concealer. So we brightened up um, the pigmentation she had on her upper lip area with that Lancome concealer since it's really peachy and it's long wearing and it's really great. So we did that and then I did, I mixed the two Becca Ultimate Coverage Concealers under her eyes just to really brighten and create that beautiful um, lifting under the eyes. And then we highlighted with the Orgasm highlighter as well as the Anastasia Amrezi highlighter. Finished off with Blush Baby, blush on the cheeks, and did her brows with the Armani brow pencil. So this is her complexion. Her face is done. Her eyes are not done yet, but we will get into that. But this is all she needs for her face, and she just looks beautiful and sculpted and perfected, and I love it, and I hope you love it too. I do. <laughs> Thanks again for watching my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment below what you want to see next. All of the products used in my video are also linked below. And if you want to see more, follow me anywhere at Joe Powell Glam. Thanks again.